Have you ever gone to Mass in a different language and felt a little out of place with its music? Having myself grown up in San Francisco, I've experienced a great deal of diversity in the Church's liturgies, with Catholics from Latin America, China, the Philippines, Nigeria, various parts of Europe, and more. The question I asked myself was this, is there a kind of sacred music that can unify all this diversity while maintaining the holiness sobriety, and reverence necessary for liturgical music. In his Moda Proprio on Sacred Music, Trales Lecitudini, Pope St. Pius X addresses this tension between diversity and unity. Among his three characteristics necessary for sacred music, the others being holiness and beauty of form, is universality. So what does this mean? By universality, Pope Pius meant that sacred music must be universally recognized as having the qualities of holiness and beauty so that anyone from any part of the world can hear the music and associate it as such. Now someone might ask, is such universal recognition of holiness even possible? Perhaps I can demonstrate this idea with a personal story. One Sunday morning as a teenager, I entered the Russian neighborhood of San Francisco and stopped by the Orthodox Cathedral of the Holy Virgin. Drawn by its beautiful Byzantine iconography, I often visited whenever I was in the area. But this time was different. I happened to enter during the Sunday Divine Liturgy. The priest celebrant was dialoguing with the choir, which responded to the priest's incantations with Gospodi Pomilvi, Lord have mercy. The experience was breathtaking. The music that filled the entire liturgy lifted my soul into prayer. And interestingly enough, even though it was in a foreign language and in tones and modes unfamiliar to me, I just knew that I was in a house of prayer. This led me to visit other Eastern churches in the Bay Area, including liturgies in Arabic and in Greek. What I noticed was that even though they were sung in different styles and languages, all of them had a reverent sobriety and holiness that aided this ordinary teenager into entering the sacredness of the liturgy. This was a revelation to me. What I experienced then was exactly what Pope Pius meant by the universal character of sacred music. Although only a teenager at the time, I soon realized that the Roman Catholic Church too had its own forms of beautiful sacred music, most especially Gregorian chant, and sacred polyphony. Just like the music of the East, this music transcends cultural bounds with a reverence, sobriety, and holiness corresponding to the reality of liturgical worship. This universality also appears in music from various parts of the globe evangelized relatively recently. For example, cathedral music in 16th century Latin America developed into a style all its own and often in indigenous languages. The works of Juan de Lienas, Antonio de Salazar, and Manuel de Sumaya illustrate this. During this same period, the introduction of chant into Vietnam and China by Jesuit missionaries to the East led to the emergence of whole new forms of chant, utilizing tones familiar to native peoples. And this too, often in vernacular language, while still rooted in Gregorian melodies. These examples of relatively recent compositions from around the world retain a sacred and universal character even to a foreigner. They don't seem out of place or offensive, but reverent, sober, and sacred to the point where any of these pieces could be introduced to any other region of the world without seeming out of place or irreverent. What can we learn from this today? We can learn that in selecting music for our liturgies, we should always ask whether the musical style can be universally recognized for its holiness and beauty. Is our liturgy merely promoting a popular trend in music? Is our liturgical music catering to just one niche of society, such as a certain age group, socioeconomic class, or ethnic community, without consideration for the universal inclusivity that Christian worship must always retain? Again, we must repeat, it is for this reason too that the church promotes Gregorian chant. 
In 2003, Pope John Paul II re-echoed Pope Pius X's rule for determining the sacredness of music and its appropriateness for the liturgy. He writes, the more closely a composition for church approaches in its movement, inspiration, and savor, the Gregorian melodic form, the more sacred and liturgical it becomes. And the more out of harmony it is with that supreme model, the less worthy it is of the temple. Why this emphasis on Gregorian chant? Gregorian chant transcending any one society or culture most exemplifies the universality due to the sacred. Only by promoting universality and sacred music may we, in the Pope's words, experience with much spiritual consolation the wonderful unity of the Church. Brothers and sisters, keep studying. This is Brother Elias Guadalupe Ford for the Western Dominican Province. <music>